Daniel Merritt, who is the founding executive director of Sankofa Community Connection, a Newport resident, and someone who has um, worked with us at the Historical Society quite a bit over the last couple of years. Um, we have had a year, um, not just locally, but nationally and internationally, of pandemic and enforced isolation and uh, a real highlighting of this country's longstanding uh, racial inequities. Um, and I think one of the most contentious and disturbing election cycles that the country has seen in a very long time. And so my question to you is, you know, how was this year for you and what stands out as um, events that may have changed things? So it's been a year of um, highs and lows, I would say. Um, the perfect storm of the pandemic politics and everything has led um, an opportunity to us to have these conversations more publicly. And I find that people are more willing to talk about things that they haven't talked about before. So um, through Sankofa, we have an um, initiative called the Trust and Equity Alliance. And we're discussing these types of things and anti-racism training and um, taking it a step further by actually holding people accountable. So we have these discussions, we work together, um, we educate on implicit bias and other things. And then we're like, okay, you have this training, what steps are you actually taking? What have you done differently in your life? What are your difficulties that you're having? And we help them move forward so that we can actually make a real change in our community. So it's um, invited opportunity definitely for discussion. Prior to the pandemic and the politics and everything going on, people didn't really wanna hear what I had to say. So um, if I approached them before, it's like implicit bias, what about this racism? Why is this important? So, um, I feel like now it's like, okay, a national stage and now it's local and now there are more conversations and there are more people willing to stand up and talk about things or advocate for things where they weren't doing this before. So it's like social justice has been on the rise and it's due to the nature of our circumstances that are um, also negative. Um, I've lost a few people in my life personally to COVID. So it's very scary. Um, it basically came out of nowhere and it's turned into devastation. It hasn't been, okay, this is gonna come and go. So like in the beginning, I thought, okay, it'll be over in a couple of months, we can resume what we usually do. And that hasn't been the case, it's dragging on and on. And then it started um, impacting people that I knew. And then we lost a few people. So then I'm like, wow. So um, I'm a mother of five. I have an 18 month old and a six month old. So it's like, I'm being very, very cautious when I go outside, it's impacting how I work, where we go and everything else. So um, this whole, everything going on at once has been a lot for people. Are there moments that you remember from the past year that were kind of pivotal for you? Moments where you went, oh no, or aha? Uh -huh. So um, we have both of those. So like an oh no is um, a lot of the work we do is um, gathering in the community and being together. So our oh no was our event that we usually have um, in your space at the Great Friends Meeting House. We were looking forward to having a really awesome event that year, we were planning. And then it went to oh no, but then we shifted to aha, let's add a component of vegetarian soul food meals to Juneteenth and let's um, provide the people with to-go meals. So that turned into a, a good success. We had over a hundred people served. Um, we got together socially distanced in the kitchen to provide these meals for people. So it was like a mixture. So what would have been, we have to totally cancel the event, switch to let's try something different. So it's brought on a new thing, which we hope to incorporate in years going forward with having meal together. So. Um, this pandemic and politics, again, is the perfect storm. And one thing that has come out of this that's been awesome is that people that we normally don't connect with or speak to have reached out to Sankofa. So we have Rabbi Mark from Toro Synagogue, and he invited myself and my board president, Ellen, to participate in a cedar. And I've never participated in one. I didn't know what it was. 
And it's beautiful because I got to learn about another culture and traditions and participate. And the people that were there were very supportive of learning about Black history in Newport and becoming activists and um, wanting to connect more and learn more. So I think that that was, um, it's really good because it's bringing people together outside of their normal um, group or walls or cohort or whatever they're involved in. They wanna learn about each other in order to get a better sense of community. So that's been super helpful. Tell me about the new space. When did that open and how did that fit into um, everything that you've been trying to do? Well, I'm so, so excited about the opportunity to finally have a space. Like we've had this nonprofit for four years and we've been mobile from home, anywhere we could fit basically all this time. And so um, the opportunity presented itself and we have a beautiful space in downtown Newport, which is like the heart of the community. So I'm so thrilled to have that opportunity. Uh, we were looking at another space and we were trying and trying and it never worked. And then all of a sudden this downtown space opened. And I'm like, I don't know about the location, but it's the best decision ever. It's a really great location. I'm hoping to get more of the community out there. So when we can open up safely again, um, I want it to be a space where people can come by and visit and hang out and we talk. Um, we got it in September of 2020 and we had our ribbon cutting in December of 2020 and then COVID is still going on. So I'm like, we haven't had our official grand opening celebration, but we did have a Black History Month celebration at City Hall and we honored um, our living legend in our community with an award at the Sankofa space. So we've been doing a few things there. Um, just very fortunate for the opportunity and the good location. When it gets up and running, what what do you, what will a day be like in the in the center? It's obviously your office, but it's a great deal more than that. A day would look like um, just surprises. So, like right now, um, I teach classes, and um, some students are virtual, some are in person. Um, we have visitors just dropping by. Um, we had this gentleman. Um, knock on the door and he said, um, what exactly do you connect? <laughs> I'm like the community. <laughs> so like people will stop by and visit. Um, if we're doing an activity, we welcome people to join in. So like I was doing an aromatherapy um, class with students and um, a person walked in. So I'm like, oh, come on and join us and make your own spray. So I want it to be a place where um, you feel like it's home like people walk in and they're like, oh, okay, this is a cool energy we have going here. So it's meant for people to have a place to come in, to learn, to participate. And also I do a lot of um, Afrocentric art on the wall because I feel like we're not represented in the black community as a, in a positive light. So I want you to come in and see the beautiful women with their head wrapped or some African themed art. And you're like, okay, I feel comfortable. I feel seen. So that's what the main thing is. We have had an upheaval that could be a blip or it could be a pivot point to something different. How do you feel about that? And what do you think needs to change? And, and you can answer this question sort of from the perspective of yourself as a human being, from the perspective as, of a community activist and um, any combination of those things. So in my opinion, what needs to change is everything. We yeah. not go back to what it used to be. We have no excuse to go back. And we can't say that's how we've always done it because this opportunity and things that have arisen are things that we've never done and they seem to be working. So for instance, the, um, the whole virtual meeting or things like that or working from home or uh, a hybrid model of schools. Those are things that we were told we can never do and look at us now, we're doing this. Um, it may be in the future, like a combination of those things, but I feel like it presents opportunity for people. So like if you have a family and you need to work from home and you have a job that allows you to, let's take that into perspective or account and offer that opportunity. Um, if you're a student who's, um, say you have, a cough or something and you can't go to school where they're telling you to stay home till you feel better. If you're able to attend virtually, perhaps that's an opportunity to not miss out on school and you can do that. So it's like starting to think of things in a different perspective um, now that we've done it the other way 
and combining it and going forward with it, that will definitely help out. Um, I think that um, conversations and things around racial equity, things like that, um, we need to demand that changes. We can't wait any longer. We can't excuse anything. We can't say we don't see it. Like this is, this whole situation has pushed things front and center, like things we've been saying for years. So it's like, you can't see it and then unsee it. Like, it's like, we have to act on things. We have to make change. And until we make things like racism um, and shift the social norms about around that and make it no longer socially acceptable, it's gonna keep remaining here. So it's like, um, being able to hold people accountable and work together to make change. And I've seen people come together and do it. We can't look back now. We can't say um, that was during COVID. So now let's shift back to what we used to do. You can't say that now because we know that things are possible. So, and also with how um, education is going, um, it's been challenging, but that's affording afforded opportunities for out of school learning and other organizations to step in and support the schools and offer like enrichment courses and other things to help build a well-rounded student, a well-rounded experience. So now that we've done that, keep us engaged with the kids. Let us still be there to support what they're doing. So like the class I'm doing now is a healing circle, um, self-care class for young people. And so that touches on a lot of the social emotional um, needs of the school and according to the standards. So why not incorporate that going forward because these are things that they'll need to help them lifelong. So, um, so my answer is everything and we have to keep moving forward. It sounds like um, you think that, and this is gonna sound a little trite, but I'm hearing this, that all of this isolation could potentially lead to better connections among people in the community going forward. Absolutely. I feel like um, it will lead to better connections because for one, we've had to hold on to what little interaction with each other we could hold on to. So it will make us appreciate each other more when we can be in each other's presence fully. But the time that we have together, Zooming or Google meeting or whatever uh, venue that we have going, um, we're appreciating that time too. So it's like, I think going forward, we'll be able to do both. Like I've been able to teach um, youth remotely in Providence and East Providence and Pawtucket um, through my classes that I have not ever been able to reach out to. And then the students now want to join any other class that we have. So we're gonna have them come by in person so we can all meet and be in each other's presence. And it's just like, it's so negative to be only online all the time and we get sick of Zooming, but it opens up the amount of people that you can reach and their location. Mm -hmm.